Welcome back. Today in the Cheapo Spotlight, the all-new Anang AN8206 non-auto ranging multimeter. Let's take a look. Originally for this review, I was supposed to have three of these little guys, but only one ended up showing up at the door. And I thought, hey, let's do the video. This shipped without a box, nothing other than a set of test leads and the meter itself. Now, starting off with the test leads, you can tell they are that El Cheapo variety. Oh yeah. But, and but, they did pass the pole test. So yeah, that little pointer did not come off no matter how hard I pulled. So yeah, they're cheap, but eh, I've seen worse. Now the meter itself, it is super light. Once again, shipped without a battery. Um, so battery is going to give a little more weight to it, of course. But uh, alas, no tilt stand as well. Why, oh why can't they put a little piece of plastic on the back of these guys? Something that makes this ending stand out from uh, the typical set is the fact that you've got those inputs on the side of the meter as opposed to the bottom. Yeah, a little bit different than your typical cheapo. Uh, normally, we're looking at those input jacks at the bottom, but uh, yeah, a little different setup. I uh, can't say I'm a fan or not, but uh, just something to take note of. Now, if you're in the cheapo game, you will know Anning is a popular name. Usually it's a name synonymous with quality at a very fair price point. Will that hold up for the 8206? Well, we'll soon find out. Bring in a couple of other cheapos. Of course, we have our Venerable 830 style and uh, something similar i think at least this one's a little more to uh compatible with the anning 8206 in terms of the overall footprint um but yeah you're getting a general look at the size basically um on par with your 830 style clones so once again um yeah it, it feels okay a little bit cheapy plastic feeling but really this was like $5.70 Canadian. So we're talking peanuts, folks. All right, we're gonna start off by putting in a nine volt battery, which I've got handy here. Uh, we've got one of these nine volt battery clips, not the greatest implementation, but it is what it is. And you can see we have that uh, threaded screw going directly into plastic, no threaded insert. So eh, too bad. Let's start things off by looking at that rotary selector switch going to the right. We have 750 volts AC, DC amps from 2000 microamps to 10 amps, HFE or transistor tester, signal generator, continuity and diode, resistance from 200 ohms to 2000 kilo ohms, volts DC from 200 millivolts to 1000 volts. Now, if we look at those inputs on the top right is our high current input up to 10 amps max below that we have our common or negative neutral ground on the left here we have our regular voltage input and finally at the top left we have our hfe or transistor tester so when we turn on the meter for the first time yeah look at that big bold display i gotta say i'm a fan if we compare it to our typical 830 display you can see it is literally three four times the size yeah huge difference if i compare that display to the pdm 711 which were reviewed not so long ago yeah it is pretty well on par i'd have to say it is a dead heat in terms of the overall look now that uh, pdm 711 has that high voltage alert as does the anning but you've also got that little voltage indicator uh, which is kind of neat as well but uh, generally speaking both of them have really decent looking lcd displays so once again it's a no frills meter no ncv flashlight live wire none of that fancy schmancy stuff now we do have that uh, signal input or sorry output generator um so that will be something kind of interesting to take a look at but really it is a no frills cheapo meter you're not flying first class with the anning a and a206 now i'd have to say this is like economy um maybe maybe cargo eh. starting off with the dc precision test we want to see 250 millivolts just a bit shy at 248 next up we want to see 2.5 volts let's 
check it out. Here we go. 2.48. So we're stuck on the 4.8s. Close? That's just not close enough. Take a quick look at resistance sitting at one mega ohm right now. Spot on 900K. Yeah, not bad. 800. Take it down to five. Yeah, fairly fast. 300. 200. 100. Yeah, not bad. Not bad at all. Hey, it's a $5 meter, guys. Diode mode is next. We have a standard shot key diode. Here we go. And if I could just get in there without this moving. There we are, no worries. Next up, LEDs. Now, I don't know, I'm not expecting a whole lot. Let's see if we can light them up at least. Here we go. Three, two, one, starting off the green LED. Oh, it is barely lit, but it is lit. Let's try the yellow. And that is also lit. Try the red. Yeah, it lights. Wow, these probes are so tiny. Yeah, okay, so that's lit. Over to the blue. And finally, the white LED. Can we do five for five? That would be, hey, spot on. So, well, you know what? Surprisingly enough, didn't get a voltage uh, readout, but we did see them all light up. So, ura, Mr. Enning. You're good for something. No, no, I'm just kidding. You're, you're not bad, not bad at all. Output voltage in dial mode is a very respectable three volts. Hey, wasn't expecting that. Bada boom, bada bing, bada bang. It is continuity time. And yes, it is my favorite time of the day. All right, here we go. Three, two, one. Stock leads. Oh. I feel like I'm being played, but chased by the polizai. Oh wow! Okay, that is very unusual and extremely useless. Oh my god! Okay, well, uh, yeah. Next, already next up, Probe Masters. Here we go. Three, two, one. Absolutely nothing. Now, interesting enough, that battery indicator is coming up, and this is a fresh. 9 volt battery. I tested it twice. Ah, absolutely useless. Thank you. For nothing. <sighs> AC voltage is next. 120 volts plugged into the household mains. 3 to 1. Bada boom, bada bing, and bada bang. 120 volts. Spot on. Have it hooked up right now to the signal generator output on the AN8206 and as you can see it is doing a fine job 50% duty cycle nice looking square wave and all seems to be good in Anning Lang Anning Land ooh sorry teardown time here we come we had two Phillips at the bottom and away we go all right let's take a closer look now, first off, yeah, $5 meter. Am I surprised? No shielding. Let's just get that out of the way really quick. Let's start off with those jack inputs. They're actually soldered in there quite nicely. Nice big blobs of solder. No worries there. And generally speaking, eh, probably a little bit better than I was expecting. So eh, for a cheapo, eh, it'll do the job. A tiny, thin little current shunt. Not much in the way of current protection on the voltage slash milliamp side of things. We have one lonely diode and one really tiny PTC. That's it. That's all. On the high current side, we have one of those current sensing resistors. Uh, no glass or ceramic fuse here. Mm. But then again, do you really want to test high current on this $5 cheapo? Probably not a good idea. Got some flux residue over here by the piezo speaker. 
Battery connector is here. Once again, uh, kind of sloppily done. Not much solder and yeah, really dirty. That's our HFE transistor connection here. Main IC is cobbed and that is really it. That's all. We've got one high powered ceramic capacitor over there. Um, yeah, slim pickings. Here we have the zebra strip or elastomar. That is what feeds that really nice LCD display. But uh, that's pretty well it for this side of the board. Something else worth pointing out as well is the input jacks themselves do have added support here. There's three of those extended slots. And what happens is when that jack is sitting down, it's actually getting a little bit better retention. So the wear and tear of taking out and inserting, reinserting the input jacks, it's gonna help the longevity over the long run. Over on the other side, we have our rotary selector switch tracks right here. And generally speaking, actually quite nice. Um, nicely plated and uh, a little bit better than I was expecting. We do have some space and overall, yeah, not bad, not too bad at all. Um, over here, we have the rotary selector switch itself. It's one of the ball bearing types and there are the pads themselves. And they have greased that uh, rotary, rotary selector as well. You can see the little um, springs down there. Yeah, that's always fun when they come apart. But uh, hmm. generally speaking, at least they did a fairly good job in terms of the lubrication for a cheapo. Hey, I'm not complaining. All right, going to put everything back. Come back with my closing thoughts. Closing thoughts on the Anning A and A206. Hey, you know what? It's a cheapie and I like it. Five bucks, you can't go wrong. Built like a little tank. It actually fell out of my hot little hands and onto a ceramic floor. Picked it up, turned it on, and not one problem. So this thing is really solid. And yeah, you know, I mean, you don't have all the bells and whistles, but you don't need all the bells and whistles all the time. Biggest problem probably is that low resistance range. Yeah, 2 mega ohm, not much going on there. And of course, no capacitance in the continuity. Well, yeah, that just sucked the big one. But for general voltage checking, diode testing, it seems to fit the bill. Keep it away from the high voltage and it'll be just fine. Anning AN8206 gets three out of five stars. Thanks for watching this review, everybody. Lots more coming up. Hope you're having fun. Spring is around the corner. Thank goodness for that. Till the next one, keep on testing. Oh God, these are always so much fun. Yes. Mm. Can I, can I, huh? can I, can I? Oh, it's in, it's in, it's in. Ura, ura. Ah. Yes. Hands of a surgeon. <laughs>